In this lesson, we're going to look at just a quick introduction to exponential functions. Um, your essential question is to be able to tell the difference between the graphs uh, of linear and exponential functions. And when you define and answer your essential question, I'd like you to be very specific and um, explain why they are different and what makes them different and how do they look different. When you're ready to begin, then um, go ahead and restart the video. Our definition of exponential functions. What is an exponential function? Obviously, we're going to be dealing with exponents. Um, we consider an exponential function a nonlinear function. Um, so one thing that means is this is not going to be a straight line when we graph it. It's not going to be linear. Um, and it's in the form, the equation is in the form, y equals ab to the x power. So exponential functions are going to look like that. Some important things is that a cannot be 0, b cannot be equal to 1, and it has to be greater than 0. So it could be between 0 and 1, um, it could be greater than 1, but it cannot be 1. And we'll talk more about why that is and how to write a linear function or exponential function um, in our next lesson. So how can you tell the difference between a set of linear data and a set of exponential data? So here's two tables. Um, one of the key things is we want to look at the pattern. We want to see what's happening between our y values. We can note that our x values are all in consecutive order because that's important too. Um, so we could say here that we're adding to, adding to, adding to. Same pattern, right? Over here on the right, to get from 4 to 8, we're adding 4. 8 to 16, we're adding 8. So even though here we're adding 16, even though there is a pattern, we're not doing the same thing every time. And so to identify this, we want to have the same um, occurrence here. So let's see if we can think about a, a different way. Um, could I multiply 4 by something to get to 8? Sure, we could say times 2. 8 to 16 times 2. 16 to 32 times 2. So there's a very clear difference here in how we're identifying it. This set of data over here is a linear set of data. It's increasing by 2. It has that common constant rate of change of 2 or 2 over 1. Over here, though, this is a multiplication pattern, and so we would consider this exponential. Okay, so one thing, this is still a constant factor, so one thing we might want to add in with our definition is that we still have a constant factor, but the constant factor is multiplied. And so what you're going to see with exponential functions is that when we graph them, they're going to kind of like quadratic, they're going to get increasingly, the numbers are going to get um, increasingly larger a lot quicker than they do with a linear relationship. Okay, so to graph an uh, exponential function, all we're going to do is make a table of values and plot the points. Now I know you can use your calculator for this, but I want to kind of look at it just with our own brains and look at how and remind ourselves of some exponent rules. So I'm going to make a table of values. I'm going to show my work in the middle. Um, just like always, we probably want to put, pick some positive numbers, some negative numbers, a zero, just so we can see where our graph is going. So I'm going to use pretty small numbers. I'm going to start with negative 1. So 4 times 2 to the negative 1. Remember, you need to do exponents first. Remember, when we're dealing with negative exponents, we have to make it positive by moving things to the opposite place. And so this would be 4 times a half, which is 2. I'm going to pick 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this would simply be 4 times 1, which is 4. I'm going to pick an exponent of an x value of 1. So that, whoops. So that's really easy. 2 to the first power is 2, and 2 times 4 is 8. And then I'm going to pick 2. 
4 times 2 squared. And so that would come out to 16. Okay, so now I'm ready to plot my points. So I'm going to draw my um, axes about right here. You can draw it wherever you want. If you draw it like this, you should have enough room to plot all your points. I have the point negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 8. Hope I counted right. And then 2, 16, which should be right here. Now, it kind of looks a little bit linear, but what you're going to see when we connect this, and if we were to maybe plot a few more negative numbers, you're seeing that it starts to curve, and you're going to see that it's going to curve and get closer and closer to a certain line, which we'll talk about in the next couple of lessons. But it's never going, in this case, it's never going to actually hit zero. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next example. This one's a little bit trickier. It has a fraction, but we can still do it together. And I'm going to give you some values, and I want you to try to think, stop the video, See if you can calculate these values on your own. I want you to pick negative 1. I want you to pick 0, 1, and 2. And I want you to see if you can calculate these on your own. And then restart the video and check and see if you got the same um, numbers that I did. When we plug in negative 1 for x, that's going to make my fraction end up flipping because both the numerator and the denominator would have a negative exponent. So this would end up being negative 2. The next one's pretty easy. That's going to be negative 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Next one's also pretty easy. That's going to be negative a half. Remember we're doing the exponent first and then applying the negative sign or anything in front of it. This one's a little bit tricky. 1 half squared would be 1 fourth. And so then that would be negative one-fourth. This graph's going to look a little bit different. It's still going to have that kind of curved effect. We've got negative one, negative two, zero, negative one, one, negative a half, and two, oops, this should be four. I didn't write that down right. And then two, negative one-fourth. So, you can see we're getting closer and closer and closer, but we're never actually going to hit that y-axis. It's going to look like it, but never is. So this is a little bit different way that a um, exponential function could look. We could also have them up here in the top quadrants and have it going down like this. So several different ways you can see your exponential function.